How do you imagine Kerala in your mind? Dense forests, serene backwaters, hill stations, and the villages of Kerala are a visual delight for the visitors. Among these villages is Plachimada, located in the Palakka district of Kerala. Plachimada used to be a place with lush green landscapes, fertile agricultural lands, and a close knitted community of Adivasi people. Agriculture was the primary occupation for most of the people in Plachimada given the highly fertile soil and abundant water supply from wells and natural springs. However, the village is no longer the same due to the arrival of a multinational giant. And that giant is none other than the Coca-Cola. How did Coca-Cola's arrival change the state of this village in Plachimada? What exactly happened there? Welcome to Navypedia. Let's dig into this. Plachimada falls under the jurisdiction of the Pirumati Panchayat in the Palaka district. In the year 2000, Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages Private Limited, an American beverage company, obtained permission from the Pirumati Panchayat to establish their bottling plant in Plachimada. They acquired approximately 34 acres of land, most of which were previously paddy fields. But why did they choose this particular location? Several factors may have influenced their decisions. This includes availability of labour, low land costs, local tax incentives and extensive government support. Additionally, Plachimada's strategic advantage in terms of distribution network and transportation infrastructure could have played a significant role. Its proximity to the major ports, roads, railways facilitates the easy movement of raw materials and finished products. Moreover, the presence of the Bharadapura River, also known as the Nila or Punnani River, Flowing through the Palakkad Gap near Plachimada provided a rich water resource. The village is also surrounded by two beautiful reservoirs, further highlighting its abundant water availability. After obtaining all the necessary permits, including one from the Kerala State Pollution Control Board, allowing the production of 5,61,000 litres of beverage per day, Coca-Cola started its production in the year 2000. They promised employment opportunities and economic development for the region. The company employed over 300 labourers and produced various brands such as Fanta, Coca-Cola, Limca, Thumbs Up, Sprite and Maza. To meet their production needs, they dug six deep bore wells and utilised two open ponds, extracting 2 million litres of water per day. Within just six months, many of the local wells started drying up. The village's groundwater was getting polluted due to the company's wastewater rendering the water unfit for consumption or domestic usage. As a result, people began falling ill due to the lack of clean drinking water and inability to cook food properly. Agriculture was also getting severely affected as the water became contaminated with chemicals. The company's massive water usage led to the depletion of all the nearby water bodies and contamination of the remaining water. The destruction of paddy fields left the farmers without income. Adding salt to injury, the company resorted to another alarming practice. In their ignorance of how and where to dispose the manufacturing waste, they distributed the sludge waste as free fertilizers to local farmers. This decision made no sense at all. The already chemically contaminated agricultural lands suffered further degradation. At that time, a British journalist collected samples from the sludge deposited by the plant and conducted tests. The test revealed high levels of toxic heavy metals like cadmium and lead. Both of these are highly poisonous and carcinogenic. The presence of pesticides in the Coca-Cola's beverages was confirmed by the Centre for Science and Environment in New Delhi. These revelations provided ample reasons for the protesters to intensify their opposition to the company. Within two years of the factory's inspection, the people of Plachimada realized that the future was in jeopardy. They launched their protest against the company on April 22, 2002, under the banner of Coca-Cola Virudha Janakiya Samara Samiti, with Mrs. Mailamma, a 54-year-old woman, leading the charge. <laughs> Not only the villagers but also social activists like Meta Patkar and Vandana Shiva joined the protests. However, the path of victory was not easy. As Coca-Cola, a powerful multinational corporation, employed various tactics to undermine the movement. 
the struggle shifted to the legal battlegrounds where the impoverished farmers stood firm and fought a legal tiring battle for the future generations they invested their hard earned money financing the legal cases while coca cola was using its vast financial resources to tip the scales against the protesters accusing them for disrupting business operations throughout these legal struggles the hccb continued to extract lakhs of liters of water from plachimada the village cried out to save their land but the company turned deaf ears on february 21 2004 the government of kerala declared palakkad district drought affected imposing immediate restrictions on the company's groundwater usage consequently on march 9 2004 the company ceased operations on january 15 2005 marking the 1000th day of picketing the protesters declared that the company would never be allowed to resume operations at any cost in 2005 new regulations established by the kerala groundwater control and regulation act came into effect on november 19 2005 The Water Resource Department classified Plachimada as overexploited thereby preventing any further extraction for commercial purposes. In January 2006, the company began exploring alternatives to relocate its operations and since then the plant has remained non-functional. This decision marked a significant victory for the movement led by Mailamma. Mailamma was honored with the Speak Out Award by the Outlook magazine. Mailamma passed away in the year 2007 and was laid to rest in the cemetery nearby the company symbolizing the triumph of the protest. Despite the closure of the company, the ghosts of the Plachimada Coca-Cola plant still haunts the village. The damages caused were irreparable. The wells in front of the houses remain contaminated and untouched for years. Poisonous remnants are said to linger on the agricultural lands. The people of Plachimada sought compensation for their losses. but to this day it remains unresolved sadly there are similar exploitations occurring in many places under the guise of development what do you think is there a solution for development without exploitation or is it inevitable comment below let's engage in a discussion